Thanks, Florian. So I start, I only have 12 minutes, right? So my name is also Florian, and I'm gonna talk today about, doesn't work, so let's see how this goes, doesn't work either. So I'm gonna talk about disruptive personal development. This is the topic today, and before I start, I would like to get to know you. So my first question to you is, who is here working for a multinational company, big corporation or something like this? Please raise your hand. Very good. Second one, who is here working at a startup or being self-employed, freelance or something like this? Please raise your hand. Thank you. Next, who dreamt or is still dreaming to become a football star? Uh, at least some honest people here. And maybe the last one, who is or was unemployed? Very good, some honest people here, I like this. So, my topic today is from youth footballer to unemployed. The perfect disruptive personal development. And just to make sure that you learn at least something here today, I'm gonna start with a very basic coaching tool. The coaching tool is a lifeline, and it's very simple, you have an x-axis, you have a y-axis. You put on the x-axis years, on the y-axis happy, which is up, and unhappy, which is down, and then you take lifetime events, for example, if you want to map your professional career, throughout your career, where were the highs and where were the lows? And that's all about the tool. As we are not here to talk about theory today, I will invite you to make a case study, and the case study is about myself. So, my hometown is this lovely town Munich where we are here today. Honestly speaking, I didn't like it. Growing up here, too boring too posh, too structured, too small. Didn't like the place. Secondly, my schooling, I didn't like either. So I was an okay student, but I didn't particularly like to go to school. So the only reason why I went to school was for meeting friends. But that was everything which I liked about school. And one sort of anecdote was when my second language was French, I had one of the first exams which I actually failed. And failing an exam in Germany is like, like a terrible thing. And the teacher even said, look Florian, French is nothing for you. Just leave it, you will never learn it. So this was sort of my exposure to learning something at a school system here in Germany. And then one thing saved me. What saved me was my childhood passion, which was football. Actually, maybe I came even close to become a professional football player because at the age of 15, I actually played for the sort of third club here in Munich and I stayed there until 19 years old. So it was really a time, at least when I was 17, where I was really considering to become a football player, which didn't work out. But actually, what I liked about playing football or what I liked about being at the football club were other things. The first thing was that I had the chance to meet lots of different people. And I had to chance, the chance to really personally get to know them. And you, as you can imagine, I mean, we have the discussion in the press right now. It's very diverse to play football, right? You have upper class, you have lower class, you have Germans, you have foreigners, everything like this. And I was particularly interested in getting to know the people. So at the end of each season, I was capable of telling you what the people were, where they're from, how many brothers they have, where they grew up, what they like, what they didn't like, if they have drug problems or not, things like this. And this was actually what I was absolutely passionate about. A second thing which I learned throughout my career at football was team play. And I think I'm still favoring team play. And for me, team playing meant I was actually able and I liked to put myself, my qualities, and everything in favor of the team, which meant, obviously, everyone in Germany wants to be a striker. So I started as a striker, but my career, I ended as a defender. Because I always thought, if the coach puts me in a different position, I want to do this because he thinks I'm right for this position, and like this, I can help the team. So this was something I particularly like, enjoyed. And maybe a second thing was eventually getting older, Eventually, the coach came and said, look, Florian, we need somebody who is the captain. And I never considered myself to be a captain, but I accepted this, and I actually, I liked it. So this was something which I took out of like, my childhood passion, which was football. And then, 
I was so happy. After my social service, I finally could leave Germany. So my university years were basically, I started in England and then by chance I ended up in France. I actually ended up learning French and actually now I'm quite capable of speaking French because I'm married to a French woman. So I think my teacher was not that right in this perspective. So my years of travel started, I studied in the UK, I studied in France, I went then to Berlin, thanks God, not back to Munich, so I had a big city, I had a very vibrant city, so I was very happy about this. And of course then, finishing my university degree, there was, okay, what can I do next to go even further? So I integrated myself in a company, which was at that point, Bosch, very international company, I integrated at Bosch and I did a like, junior management program because sort of leadership was an aspect which I particularly enjoyed. So my career objective was going global and being a leader. And, well, I finally achieved it. After this program, after two years of this program, I went for my first assignment abroad to China. I stayed six and a half years in China. I built up one business division there as a head of marketing and I moved to a second assignment, which was in Taiwan, where I stayed for three and a half years in Taiwan, building another business division. So, I reached everything. I reached everything global manager. This was really my absolute dream. But something was missing. And something was missing and I was thinking, what's wrong? I'm not perfectly happy about this. So my thought process was about how can I analyze what I really want to do in my life? And at the age of 35, it's somehow also a point, like I had family, I have a son, and so what do I really want to do in life? So. In order to find this out, I think the best way of finding this out is just try exactly the opposite. Being an expat in Taiwan in a fancy flat was amazing, but I decided to do a sabbatical. I decided to do a sabbatical and I went traveling with my family. Went to the south of Portugal and there I went to live on a permaculture farm. I went to very alternative, like sort of a university um, st uh, school projects. I went to um, some like really sort of autonomous communities, self-sufficient communities and things like this, just to get a feel for this. What, what else is out there? What's the other extreme? And also this, I was not so happy. And then there came a stroke of destiny and the stroke of destiny somehow brought me back to Munich. Back to square one. So I came back to Munich and I realized this city is amazing. It's beautiful. Sort of the environment is great. The nature. I mean, you have organic and bio stores everywhere. It's fantastic. It's really like a perfect place where sort of the social security net is perfect. It was really something like I thought, wow, impressive. But I had to be away for a long, long, long time just to realize this. And then I thought, what could I do next? And sort of the next step was, hmm, you know what? I quit this career. So I quit my job and I became unemployed. And this was, honestly speaking, for me, an absolutely liberating decision. It was all this pressure of, like, I have to make a career, I have to go this way, I have to work like a crazy guy. And now I had some time to think. And to think what I really want to do with my life. And the first thing I decided, I go back to school. And this time, I chose something which I'm really, really passionate about, which I'm really, really interested about. And what was it? Working with people, working with teams, improving teams. So, I, 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 I did a training course to become a coach and trainer, and I absolutely loved it. Being at school for something which you're really intrinsically motivated is absolutely amazing, because the learning curve, curve is extremely steep. And so then was, okay, so now I taught you something about a coaching tool and I haven't given you anything about this. So maybe let's go back to the tool. And this is what I want to leave you with. What's all about this tool? Basically this tool is ups and downs and life is ups and downs. And in order to change the perspective, you should not only look at ups but also at downs because also the downs can show you something which is very, very valuable. I think a second point is look at what you were really passionate about when you were little. Because these passions were not driven by some whatever career expectations or some environment choices. No, no, these were passions which you most of the times selected by yourself. A third point is certainly passionate not, is not something which you find along the way. Oh, there's passion, let's go on it. No, no, I think passion is about connecting the dots. Passion is about putting several elements together and saying, look, I go forward with this. 
and maybe a, a last one, and which is probably the most important one. Change is constant. And sometimes very dramatic aspects within your life, which might be job loss, which might be sort of a health crisis, or anything like this, is a perfect starting point. Because at this point, maybe you are shifting somehow the way, and you are actually shifting to the right way. So now, what were the results for myself? My results. I will work as a coach, consultant, and trainer. I will teach at university. I'm going to launch my business with a business partner. I'm focusing on individual and teams, and I'm focusing on changing developments. These are the things I'm really passionate about. And as I have still one minute and 11 seconds, one last thing I kept from the farm, and this is planting a seed. And that's my seed. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions for 12 minutes. <laughs>